Hush now hear, the harsh night ends, the night hawk wheels, the new sun sends its first awaking gleam, and far we see the light of the morning star, morning star, morning star, morning star, oh, the world has rolled one time around. Upon our ears, life's music sounds. We have this gift of peace and more. We have the light of the morning star. Oh, Lord, like dark birds in the dust, we thrash with broken wings. All lust is turned to hunger and seeing far the light of the bright morning star, morning star, morning star, morning star. The oceans chill and bleak and wide, the deserts cold, the dark kelp tide, the waves which smash on the foaming bar. Ah, there is the light of the morning star. Oh, hush now here, the harsh night ends, the night hawk wheels, the new sun sends its first awaking gleam, and far we see the light of the morning star. Johnny R. Lee is one of the spiritual leaders of our tribe to the young people and to the old people as well, the most prominent influence in our ceremonies and in the religious aspects of our reservation. Johnny's not an old man, but he knows a lot of the things that the old people know. He works with the elders of our tribe. He'll do the traditional ceremonial things with them. And by doing this, he learns the things that they know. And by doing this and working with the children, the old people like what he does and assist him and help him in any way they can. Johnny has kept busy all the time, but he donates his time to any of the young people on the reservation, and I think that that's probably his most important uh, mission, is the fact that he'll do anything at all to help kids uh, learn to drum, learn to sing songs, demonstrate the fact that they've learned some things about being an Indian, and he'll work with these children any time of the day, any time of the night, whether he's sick or tired or whatever, so that he's kind of a go-between between, between the old spiritual leaders and the young people who are trying to learn all the things they can about their tribe before it's too late. We're thankful that we have Johnny R. Lee. We're lucky that we have Johnny R. Lee. And I hope he's around here for another hundred years. And it'll take him about that long, I think, to do the things he has to do. time ago, the old people used to talk about the sweat houses through the valley here. And there was a, a lot of the sweat houses at about oh, four in the evening or so, everyone would be making fire. And to me, it seems like everyone had gone into church all at the same time. It 
It was all across the valley here. People could see the smoke. And, and everyone seemed to be praying at the same time. And today, I suppose you could probably count it on one hand, maybe. That sweat houses on this valley here. No place to play, but a place to pray. Being inside a sweat house, I, I feel alone, away from the outside world. And when I close the door, I'm inside of the ribs. He has ribs inside. He comes alive. These rocks that he has are his his heart his heat that he gives out to you it's his holy rock then with a stick stick that i pound onto it it gives me i feel a little strength for myself and also it keeps time with my songs that i sing Ah, thank you, thank you for, for all the good things that I've been seeing since my heart has changed. Okay, it's a lucky. Ah, hey, I, 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 great-grandchild go up to the highest mountain and look for that water that comes out from the rocks it's clear cool and clean go up there to Pierre great-grandchild just you and the water and the mountain and you listen carefully, for you hear nothing else but the stream, the hustle of the water. It's great medicine for you, Johnny. Listen carefully. <laughs> The time when I first uh, came around to, to want to help my people, there was a wake going on, and I felt I had to say something. My, my heart was was bothering me. I had some words to say for the for the people, and I just didn't know if I if I could do it. Anyway, there was a man talking. He had good words to say, and I was sitting in my chair. I was kind of nervous, just shaking. You know, in the times when we lose our relatives. We think of nothing but the spirit. Our recent death. He was a good man. Even if I meet him on the street, he's got some something to say something good that makes me feel good all over. And now, I am thinking of him 
I've been in hell. The Spirit of God says every nation of the world shall know about me. And who believes in me shall be saved. Thank you. When he sat down, I, I knew I had to, to get up and say a few words, so I, I got up and I kind of stumbled up and I started, started the, my speech. I, I, I'd like to say a few words. I'd like to say that we're kind of moving too fast in this world and we should slow down a little bit. All of us seem to, to, to get hurt if we move too fast. It seems that people are moving too fast in this world and we have to slow down a little bit. But after I finished talking, I, I sat down. I, I, was, I was a little scared. I had put my head down. I a little nervous. But there was not, not a sound from all the people. The people never said one word. And this scared me. I, I thought maybe I I done something wrong because I, this was all left, was supposed to be for the elders. The elders were the ones that uh, got up to talk to the people at wakes. And I thought maybe I got out of hand. Maybe I'd done something wrong. So I sat there all that night up, up until the midnight meal. And so when we went in to eat, I was still quiet. I was still shaky, scared. I hate to bring my head up and look at anybody because I thought I'd done something wrong. And so while we was eating, and there was this man sitting beside me, and uh, he, uh, he was the one that kind of woke me up. He kind of brought me back to my senses. Johnny, huh. you're a little slow. Yeah. Catch up. <laughs> so he broke out laughing. And that's what kind of woke me up that time. If it, if it hadn't been for that, I'd probably gave up, you know, at that time to, to get up and talk at a wake. And I think this is the great thing about, about the human people, that they can come in and, and pick each other up. Well, come on, Dave. Let's have a, let's have a drumming practice. Now we'll try one song, and we'll see if we can if we can learn this one.
today. And I'm not ashamed of what I do. Everything that I do is for the good. I know what I'm doing. I have a clear mind. try to remember that we, we want to make this drum sound like one. When we're all beat in every different direction, it don't, we're not working together. So what we're trying to do here is make a little circle. We're trying to be together. What we do here, we're, we're working as one. So we have to try to make this drum sound like one. Okay? I'll be over as soon as I get ready here. I'll, I'll have to clean up and everything. Okay, bye. See you. Here you can have some coffee, please. Alright, thanks. You can eat now or later. No, I'll wait till I get there. Okay. I packed your suitcase. It's in there. I put your shirt that you got for Christmas. My best. Oh, Being called for weeks is my job, my number one job. Uh, nobody has appointed me on this. And after it's all finished with, then I know I have a feeling in my heart that I have done what I went out to do to help the people. Ah, that sounds a lot better now. We're getting, we're getting to it. Now if we can just keep it right up. You know, uh, I had a chance to get into, uh, you know, the movie Jeremiah Johnson. And uh, there was one little scene there. That was before I got the hair. And anyway, they, they gave me this wig. See, I had little makeup on and all of this. And he had, the director was, was, he had this horn, you know, and he told me to get behind some trees. So as I got behind the trees there, there was three other people was with me in, on horses. He says, okay, action. So I got the horse a-going, and my wig got caught behind one of them bushes. <laughs> <laughs> God, you know. We had to go back and get another. Another take of that. The last one was good, though. When I hadn't fallen off the horse. <laughs> Johnny himself has told me that he wasn't—he wasn't always like he is now. Uh, there was a time in his life when he was just about the opposite, according to him. grandfather told me a long time ago a lot of things and I never really paid attention I never I guess I never listened and so when he when he died when I was 17 he died and I was kind of left alone I kind of wandered around the country here getting into trouble and all these things that my grandfather had told me a long time ago I I've, I thought I forgot them and so if you listen now, you won't have to wait till you're 30 or 40 years old before you finally realize, oh, that's what my grandfather, or that's what so-and-so was telling me about. And this will make all of you kids here one of these days when you grow up, you guys will all be one. You guys won't be fighting with each other, you guys will be together. So this is just a little something I want to give you. I'm not... I'm not trying to preach to you. I'm trying to give you something for your for your heart to, to listen to, for 
for your own keepsakes. Go to the high mountain and listen. Just listen. I was just thinking about about the time when uh, when Vic uh, had told me about you know I guess just about the time I changed heart and uh, well anyway I was kind of on a on a on a father's side he knew it and he, oh and I was still drinking then you know Vic. Vic told me, he says, why don't you go home and, and uh, just sit down and study your kids, just look at your kids. So I went home and came home here, I sat down. And I just watched the kids kind of roaming around, playing around. And all of a sudden, my, my, uh, my, uh, my mind wandered over to when I was small and I was here at the house with uh, my grandfather and my grandmother. And it, was, it was kind of sad because my grandmother and they never used to let me go out and play with other kids to stay home. They used to always say that I might get in trouble if I roam around with other kids. And that, that was kind of the thing that was kind of roaming through my mind at that time. And I had, I cried at that time. I really thought about these kids. I hate to see these kids in a broken home, a broken family. So that's when I kind of really made up my mind to, to try to do my best anyway. And until the kids were well grown up and, and on their own, like this. Like they've been able to to raise them together so that the kids can be able to, to have a family life. I guess that's what's kind of a rough on a lot of the a lot of the people. A lot of the people with uh, with broken homes, you know, they, they never have any uh love and Good. <laughs> so I, I've been trying, and I, I feel concerned about the rest of the kids of today, and I've been trying to help the best way I can. But then I got involved into, into the wakes, into helping other people with sadnesses. And, uh, I get a lot of comments when I go to lectured schools about... Ivan, would you get the baby for me, please? You know, if I was... If I got my vision anywhere, if I got power, if I got medicine or anything. Okay, George, I have but I look at it this way. I think... I think all of us... All of us here on, on Earth have that... That power to heal. And that one power to heal is a time of... of sadness, you know, when people lose something in precious in their family. Little ones, and this is something I picked up at the wakes to to heal the broken heart of, uh, of people yeah. that have lost Daddy. someone. And so I think everyone's got that, that good heart to, uh, to be able to heal someone. Yes, and I I really get that concern for the kids. I, I really like to see them come out and do something to be able to pitch in and help us. It's, uh, everyone, give everyone a good hand. So that they can, so that they can help one another. You want some butter on there? No. No. Just jam. Huh? Mm -hmm. I know, like Jay Blue here, that when we were Doris and I, we were hitting the bars when Blue was born. We. We used to sit him up in a baby board and hit all these bars and sit him up behind the bar. And some some days it'd be kind of kind of a crazy thing. Wake up in the morning and we'd wonder where Blue was at. Kind of a sad thing. I guess it, 
We just about broke up about three times, huh, dear? Yeah, at least. And that last time was, was a scary feeling. I, I really... I really miss the family life, I guess. And Doris has been my big... my big help in the family. Keeping me straight. She's just like a mother to me, you know, too. She washes my clothes and feeds me and everything like that. I'm just like a little kid, just like I'm reborn again, you know, just just about about three, four years old. That's just about how long it's been since I straightened out. Hey, Sophia, hey, Lem Lem. Sophia, Sophia, Hey, Sophia, Sophia, Thank you, Grandfather. That's what happened. Listen. Just listen. I thank you for bringing me home, bring me back to my to my roots, to my home, Grandfather Sotas. Thank you for for showing me back home from from all the tracks that I've gone to, the many trails that I've crossed over. <laughs> Grandfather Sotas.